Welcome to my channel. I get to do someone new. I never heard of these people. The Wands singing back home. No idea what it is, but as I do with every new artist that I get introduced to, I look forward to it because you've asked me to listen to it, and so I know it has to be good because you guys don't recommend bad stuff. And I know it's probably something that you think I would enjoy, so that makes the anticipation even higher. So thank you. Thank you for coming to my channel. Thank you for being so wonderful. Thank you for the requests that you make. And thank you for the support. I really am blessed by it. As I do with every artist that I feature on my channel, I will go to the Wands YouTube channel and I'll get all their links and I'll put them in the description of my video. All you have to do then is click on the description, on the more link of the description, and you'll see those links. What I ask you to do is to support the artists that I feature on my channel by subscribing to their YouTube channels, by following them on social media, and by buying their music if you like their music. So this is The Wands singing back home. You know, if if we're all going to be honest in this room, our first heartbreak isn't really romantic, tamaba. And just by a show of hands, okay, just to prove my point, anyone in this room, it's either you or a close uh, relative is part of a broken family. Raise your hands. If you're here and you're part of a broken family. My point is, one way or another, we're either experiencing abandonment, suffering from an absent parent, or a broken home. When we were writing this song, it's not just about being sad. This song is also saying, you know what? I miss you and I love you. And no matter how painful, my love for you is greater than the pain that it cost me. So when we sing, I still want you back home, it's saying, okay na ako eh. I, I'm a grown-up. I'm fine. But can you just go back home? I woke up again in a very strange dream. Tears in my eyes. I thought it was real You told me a story Cause I couldn't sleep Put me to bed And lay there with me I'm all alone I still want you back home hmm.
So don't take the blame. I want you right here by my side. I still want you back home. I still want No. I don't want to talk right now. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Hmm. Oh, man, what a song. Oh. Oh, you know, uh, he talked about broken families, but that song applies just as well to those of us who've lost our parents or anyone that we loved. Doesn't matter who they were. Man, that one gets you right in the heart. Oh, boy. Uh, uh. It says there's no pain too deep in the presence of a love that heals. <laughs> yeah. Man. Man, oh man, oh man. Well, I don't know who the Wands are. I don't know where they're from. But that is one heck of a song. And the choir. The choir just made it even more powerful. When they started singing, that's when it really hit me. All those people, all singing, I still want you back home. You know. Oh. You know, <clears throat> our parents, some are really lousy at it. And they break our hearts in many ways. Others are very loving, like my parents were. But even loving parents sometimes can say or do things that just pierce you to the core. I'll, I will never forget this as long as I live. My brother David had a heart attack. And he was in atrial fibrillation for too long and it, it caused brain damage that was irreversible uh, they put a stint in his heart but there was no hope I mean he was basically brain dead before he got to the hospital but of course you never want to admit that and so 
uh, he, he remained alive in the hospital for six months before he finally passed away. I, being the eldest son, had the privilege of telling my mother. Nobody else wanted to tell her. And so I went to her house and I said, Mom, David's in the hospital. I need you to go with me now. And while we drove to the hospital, I explained to her what had happened. And we didn't know at that point the neurologist hadn't come to tell us that there was very, very little chance of him ever regaining consciousness. But we knew that he was in a coma and that he was in serious trouble. And so mom and I went to the hospital together and we were standing on either side of his bed and holding his hands. And she looked at me and she said, and this may shock you, but I'll explain it. She said, this should have been you. Boy, that made my wife mad. Oh, she was so angry. Oh my God, she was angry. But I understood what my mom was saying. My brother David owned a gas station and he had worked his entire life with his hands. And he was, you know, we thought he was in good shape. I, on the other hand, worked uh, at a desk uh, in computer security and I was grossly obese because I ate lunch every day with the crew and never paid any attention to my weight and didn't exercise or anything. I've since changed that and I've lost 60 pounds. I need to lose more and I'm exercising regularly. But at that time I wasn't and so what she was trying to communicate in her wonderful Swedish way was that she didn't understand why David, who had worked so hard all his life and, been, and looked like he was in good shape, had a heart attack instead of me, who was obese and obviously should be in trouble. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, the doctors could never find anything wrong with me. Every blood test is normal. Every heart exam is normal. Oh, I've had, you know, some bumps here and there, but nothing serious. That's why I think I'll live to be 117. <laughs> <coughs> but... You know, I could have been I could have been very hurt by those words if I didn't have a close relationship with my mother and know what she meant by them. But so many times people don't have that kind of relationship with their parents. And so when the parents say things, you know, maybe maybe you would put it that they weren't thinking, but when they say things to you you take them the wrong way and you get hurt by them. And it's hard to get past that. But in the end, after it's all said and done, and they're gone, you just want them back home. You just want to see them again. It's amazing the bond that is created between parents and their children. And you have to be a really, really, really lousy parent to break that bond. I, I mean, seriously lousy. You can't just be a crappy parent. Crappy parents will still be loved. You have to do, 
you, you have to be beyond abusive to break that bond. That's how powerful it is. Despite all the pain and all the heartache, you still love them. And boy, I wish there were a way that we could just wipe the slate clean and start over and have every child raised by loving parents because it is such a gift. And if you, if you were raised by loving parents, you'd understand God better. There's a reason why he calls himself the father in the Bible. It's because if you know what a father is, then you understand what God is. But all too often people don't know what a father is because they don't even have one in the home. It makes it much harder. Oh, I'm getting way off the track, aren't I? Oh, this song was powerful. This song was really powerful. I mean, it, it went straight to the heart. And I'm sure it did a lot of you too. And so, at the end of the day, I'll pray for you that you have an abundant life that you live a long time and that you're healthy and that God keeps you safe from harm. I pray that he will do the same for every person that you love. But I pray most of all that you will be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, you will make your requests known to God and the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam era vet out.